it's that one camera guy back at it again with another video today I wanted to talk about my experience my first Friday night football game that I shot um, like a week and a half ago two weeks ago depending on how you watch this video I went out and I brought with me the Sigma 120 the 300 with the 5D Mark III grip that was effectively the kit that I brought with me when I went and shot football um, that Friday the game that I was at was Wasco versus BHS. And it was a really important game because it was a Division IV Valley Champion team versus um, an undefeated, by the way, undefeated Division IV team versus a Division I team. And so, from what I was told, there was roughly 6,000 people of a t at a, that attended the actual game itself. So, it was very, very exciting uh, for the first game that I've ever shot. I got there um, around 5 o'clock, JV was still playing. At that time, I was just getting kind of ready. I had the camera lens and the body mounted already together. At the time, I didn't have the extender actually on the camera. Uh, I was just taking uh, photos and, and just trying to gauge the camera and the combination. For the most part, it was very responsive because there was still plenty of light available. The photos came out pretty good. It wasn't, it wasn't very challenging to shoot in that environment. So after that game ended, when Varsity came out, that's when things started to get interesting, right? The whole Friday night football concept. At that time, I had never yet tested out the 5D Mark III's low light capability to such an extent. I mean, I've done tests and stuff, but to really put it through its paces in a really challenging environment, that's, that was definitely a testament to it. Another thing I wanted to talk about was just the fact that I needed to make a decision. Was I going to use the 120 to 300 without the extender, or use the 120 to 300 with the extender? And I talked about this in one of the field videos that I was doing. Was that I noticed you didn't get enough reach with the 120 to 300 on a full frame body, and I said that you probably are going to need to have an extender. Secondly, the sidelines weren't really that spacious. So trying to actually get around on my side of the field with the team that I was with was very difficult. Actually trying to get through and trying to position myself was challenging because I actually had to pass players, I actually had to go in front of players, move in front of coaches, um, and I didn't want to block the stands because there were some areas where the field it was set up in such a way that there was sections where the audience was at the same floor level as the actual field, so you didn't want to block your view. So obviously I was kneeling a lot uh, in different places and I didn't want to make sure I was blocking anyone's uh, you know, view of the actual game. This is what I had, Sigma 120 to 300, with the battery grips, an aftermarket one uh, from Bayo, which or Pixel something Bayo but it's, it's worked great. I mean, I haven't had any issues with it. And then the monopod that I had attached to the actual camera was this one here. This is a, a Manfrotto video monopod. Since I do video, I figured I might as well double up. But I actually didn't buy this initially thinking I was gonna do football. So I, I got this because I did a lot of video, so I got this little guy here, which is really great. It's it's not necessarily rated to support a heavy setup, but it did just fine for me, and um, it worked really great. So I had that, and it was mounted on the actual camera. The next thing that I had was this GoPro, right? I've talked about this in my other videos. I had the GoPro mounted to the actual uh, hot shoe or cold shoe of the camera, and this was for a, a video. Right? I'm doing this because I wanted to get a first person perspective of me taking the photos and getting some secondary shots of the, of the crowd and the game because I love putting together promotional videos and so it's very important that I get some type of reference video to help me out and, able, and, and, and to be able to actually do that. And that's something you should really think about for yourself when you're, um, when you're doing this kind of work. And like I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of photographers, there was a few that were out there who were at, asked me, you know, what's that you got on top of the camera? You know, I told them it's a GoPro. So let's talk about the performance of the camera itself. First of all, I'm using the 5D Mark III. You already know the 5D Mark III. Very great camera, great little light performance. It's a stunner of a camera, okay? When I was taking photos of JV, camera didn't have any issues at all, 
right? I was probably at 1600, I actually put my camera at 1600 shutter speed to freeze action. ISO probably 400, 200, 400, something like that during that time. As soon as the lights went out, as soon as the sun's, the sun's light went out and the, the, the lights came up on, on the actual game, I was pushing the camera to about 1 640th of a second at about 12,800 ISO. Okay. And that's with the, the extender. Okay. That's with the extender. So I had the extender on and my camera was at f4. But it gave me up, a, it gave me that 400 millimeter reach that I needed, and that I did use quite frequently. So I pushed the camera quite a bit of ways, and it performed fairly well. Uh, I mean, it still, it still did a pretty darn good job. I tracked the the game pretty good. As far as the settings that I used for the camera, I, like I said, when it got really dark, I used 1640, 12,800 ISO, aperture of f4. Okay, that's basically where I was at. If I had stuck with the 2.8 lens at, at, without the extender, I would have been at what, 6400 ISO I believe, so it would have helped a lot there. But I knew I could push the, uh, the 5D Mark III um, to 12,800 ISO and still get some really good images. Uh, the one thing I want to say is that I had a choice either going with JPEG or RAW for this particular uh, for this particular game. I normally shoot RAW, like 90% of the time I always shoot RAW. I just figured that this time I probably should just shoot in JPEG. My settings weren't going to change much once the lights went, uh, once the sunlight was gone. And I knew for a fact how much I could push the camera anyway. So I really didn't need to use RAW to help fix the photos. And I'm not gonna fix 100, 200, 300 photos that I took anyway. So I just went and shot in JPEG because for one, it was gonna take less space on the memory card. It was gonna give me more ability to just focus on shooting without having to worry about changing camera um, memory cards or worrying that I was gonna run out of camera um, you know, exposures that I could take while I was actually at the game. So during that entire time, I mean, the camera was at 1999. It says 1999 on there as far as the memory card is concerned on JPEG for the entire duration of the game. So I could have probably taken like four to 5,000 photos, I think, with, with that 64 gigabyte card and not worry about space. So that was really handy. That was really great to know. And like I said, in most cases, I probably wouldn't. It's just, I figured since it's a sports game, I'm looking just to get the action. And my exposure is pretty spot on, so I, I wasn't concerned about that at all. One thing that I will say versus, you know, there's people that have the 400 or the 300 2.8 Canon or Nikon version of it, is that there is an advantage to having a, a zoom lens that can go uh, to such a large aperture like 2.8. When I was shooting right when I'm when I'm shooting at the game okay, I have trouble tracking the actual play right I think that's an issue that everyone has they run a play and they're running running going, going through the field and you don't even know where it's going like you'll see everyone going down this way but someone else has the ball and they're going around the side here and I totally miss it so what I did instead at the time, I was always like at 300 millimeters with the extender on. What I decided to do was I said, you know what? Why don't I just go to 120, start at, start at 120, and get a view of the entire people, the entire football players, right? I can see that the play kind of play out. As soon as I see who has the ball, I go to 300 right away. And either I'm shooting vertical or horizontal, depending on the situation. I, was, I shot fairly horizontal for the most part. When I was trying to get shots at the quarterback, I went vertical with my shots. However, I would zoom into one. I would be zoomed at 120, basically, on the monopod. Okay, going by. As soon as I noticed somebody with the ball break away, I went to the 300 mark and I changed. I tried not to try to. I tried not to take photos and, and change the, the zoom. I just quickly did it as quickly as I noticed it and then I started trying to track motion and take photos. So having a zoom lens I can definitely say is an advantage but I'm assuming 
If you've been doing this for a while, you really don't need that. And just having a prime lens, 400-2.8, 300-2.8, you're gonna be pretty damn good at this already. But for me, first time doing this, having that zoom ability really did help. And I didn't really think of that towards, you know, maybe towards the middle of the game, when I realized like, this might be a good idea. You zoom out, and then as soon as I see the ball go out, zoom in right away and track the ball and take photos, right? But overall, it did an amazing job in, in doing that. Another thing I wanted to point out was that this is a really interesting quirk. And I, I don't know if this was updated in the recent firmware. I, I decided not to upgrade to the recent firmware on the 5G Mark III for a couple of reasons. One, the third-party batteries lose um, tracking. You lose that information uh, with the new firmware. And secondly, I don't know if Magic Lantern raw video is accessible on the latest firmware. I think it's only in the previous one that it's available. So I decided not to upgrade to that. But I will say one annoyance that I have is that when you're in AI servo mode and you're holding up the camera, you have to constantly press uh, the little AF button on the, the, the right side of the camera to see where your focus point's at. So while you're kind of half pressing, half pressing along while you're shooting, you don't see where your AF point is. And sometimes you forget because you may move it one place or another and you're not exactly sure where it's at. So it becomes a problem. I, I didn't really think of it much, but it actually does make it difficult for you to know where the hell you're at when you're taking the photos. So that's a little quirk that I have. I just gotta kinda find a workaround for that. So I shot an AI servo, high shutter speed, high FPS. Um, I set it to, in one of the AF modes for sports, I think I just left it on case four, I think, for subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly. I'm sure there's a better one to choose. I just stuck with that one. That just seemed to, to be the one to work for me. So yeah. I mean, it was it was a very enjoyable opportunity. It was exhausting, I'll tell you that. I mean, I was working the entire day and then I drove out to the game, but it was it was worth it. It was a definitely fun game to watch. The, the team I was rooting for didn't win, but it, they still did a pretty good job against a Division One team, and I learned a lot from that experience and how to how to take photos and, and how to handle it. Um, so, again, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you like the stuff that I'm posting on this particular channel, make sure you subscribe so you can follow along on the upcoming videos that I put up. Um, again, I love to try and incorporate first person perspectives into the video so you actually get to see what in the world is going on with the lens. It's one thing to tell you, right? It's another thing to show you. So I will have the photos available of the game online. They're actually, it should be on my Flickr account so you can take a look at them and analyze them and comb through them. But overall, the Sigma 120 and 300 is pretty damn good, along with the 5D Mark III. The combination just works. Like I said, if you don't have a lot of freedom to move around on the field, you're gonna want an extender, I'll tell you that. But I think if I had the ability to run really quickly across the sidelines without being obstructed, I think I would've just went without, this, uh, without the actual extender. But because it was so difficult to get by, I ended up using the extender, which I think kind of you know affected the quality a little bit, but it was still really good. So, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.